In today's video, we attempt to make the scariest looking Sith figure ever, the one and only Darth Maul. Make sure you watch to the end to see how this turns out because I have a new favorite and I think you will too. We are in the process of making eight Star Wars themed figures for a Star Wars tournament. Here is a review of who we made so far. The Mandalorian. Kylo Ren. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Praetorian Guards with Snoke training figure. And Battle Giant General Grievous. Okay, now that you're caught up, let's get back to the workshop. For this build, I'll be using another play school figure I found on eBay. We got really lucky finding this Darth Maul play school figure because the head is pretty accurate and actually looks a lot like the character. The same can't be said for all play school Star Wars figures. <coughs> Episode 1 The Phantom Menace was the Star Wars I grew up with as a kid and I must have watched that movie a hundred times. I can clearly remember Darth Maul being a very agile and acrobatic warrior. In the final fight with Obi-Wan and Gwygon, he was jump kicking them left and right. So I'm gonna make Darth Maul a kicker. I also saw a picture of Darth Maul's tattoos on his chest and I thought that it looked too cool to keep covered up. Let's go to the corkboard and I'll show you guys. Here's where the inspiration for this project comes from. Look at this shot I got from the Phantom Menace. I think Batfoot is perfect for this project. This pick is what I want our Darth Maul to look like. Long outgrown horns, the upper body tattoos, shoulder high black gloves, and puffy pants. The first thing we have to do is remove Darth Maul's head. And as we know from our General Grievous build, in which we also use the play school figure, these heads are not made to be removed. There is no possible way you can pull this head off. So we're gonna make a small incision in the back of his head. Now we can separate it enough to get it over this plug and off it comes. Akedo Warrior heads are a lot easier to come off, probably because we've done it a couple dozen times already. Now we have to drill a larger hole in the bottom of our new head so that it will properly fit on an Akedo neck. The key to doing this safely is making sure that you have the head secured firmly with your hand out of harm's way. And don't try to drill the hole out with one drill bit. Slowly step up the size of the bits by making several passes. To keep the figure looking proportional, I want to fix the head in a higher position. This means that the neck will be fully exposed and to make it look more realistic, we need to shave that bottom ring off. My cordless Dremel with sanding bit are the perfect tool for the job. I use a half round file to clean up the areas near the body and finally some 240 grit sandpaper to smooth it out. That looks a lot better. You guys know we can't make a Darth Maul figure without his iconic double-bladed lightsaber. I had ordered one on Etsy a long time ago, but I can't seem to remember where I put it. But luckily, while I was looking for new horns for Darth Maul, I made an amazing discovery. Darth Maul's double-bladed lightsaber. Oh yeah, look at that. I can't wait to see this thing in action. Let's make him holding his lightsaber the same way Captain Plunderfoot is holding his sword. In order to accomplish this, we need to do a hand swap. Our hand donor will be this local grande I found in the parts jar. I don't even know why he's that color. Was I trying to turn him into Hulk Hogan or something? To remove Badfoot's hand, I'm going to use a coping saw to cut it away from his shoulder. Then I can use the trim shears to finish the cut. Next we need to enlarge the hole so the lightsaber can slide in. This is the exact same technique I used to drill out the head.
Before we glue the hand on, I just want to make sure that the lightsaber is in the right position. I always use a battle giant to align the weapon because if your warrior can't hit a battle giant's button, you're in trouble. Everything looks like it's going to line up so I super glue the hand on. Something still doesn't look right about the figure and I think it's because of his scrawny legs. So I'm going to use some vinyl patch to add some bulk to his bottom half. I like to use this stuff because it's easy to apply and even easier to sand. After applying it, I try to shape it the best I can so there's less sanding to do later. The only downside is that this stuff takes a long time to dry, so we'll leave it in front of the fan overnight and hopefully it'll be ready to sand tomorrow morning. It's morning and Darth Maul's pants are completely hardened and ready for sanding. And like I said earlier, the vinyl patch is very easy to sand. He looks a lot better in his MC Hammer pants, so now it's time to fix another issue, Darth Maul's horns. Right now his horns are looking more like bumps that he should go see a doctor about. Let's make them a little more menacing. We'll replace them with these six Lego claw pieces. The tricky part is cutting each horn at the right length and angle, but don't worry about getting it perfect because after the super glue dries, we'll do some additional shaping in which we can make up for any imperfections. I can see the potential. Let's put this on the side to dry. I've decided to use some of the leftover plastic we have from the Praetorian Guard customization to create a similar effect. I really don't know what you would call this, but in some pictures I've seen, it appears as if he's wearing the bottom half of his robe, even though he's not wearing the top half. Recreating this look with the plastic is really fun and easy. I'm going to sand and glue these pieces on prior to painting unlike the Praetorian Guard build. Hopefully I can reach everything with my airbrush. Now I'm really happy with the way it's looking and I'm all ready to paint, but I totally forgot to sand down the lumpy patches of fur on Badfoot's shoulders, arms, and back. Anytime I do sanding on the figure, I like to use a stiff toothbrush and some solvent to get everything smooth and clean again. I'm getting a little nervous at this point because I know how difficult it's going to be to get all of Darth Maul's tattoos painted on. But we've come too far to even think about failing. So let's bust out the airbrush. Now that the black base coat is all dry, let's attempt to paint Darth Maul's chest tattoos. Here are some tips when you're doing fine detailed paint jobs. 1. Brace your hands against as many things as possible. Use the table, figure, and even your other hand. 2. Get a good fine paintbrush. 
Three, break down the design into basic lines, shapes, or letters, and focus on one line at a time. Halfway through the chest tats, and I think it looks pretty good. Make sure you stick around for the final reveal. Ma's horns need more reshaping, and the easiest way to do this is with a razor blade. Make sure you don't attempt this at home, it's very dangerous. With every cut, it gives the horns a unique and organic look. Now this looks 100 times better and we're ready to paint. Even though Maul's head was completely painted, I knew from the beginning that I wanted to repaint it, just so all the colors matched and also so I could make some of the lines crispier. But having the design to go off of was really a lifesaver. And with everything painted and his head glued on, let's give him one thick layer of gloss clear coat. This will make him nice and shiny and it will also protect his paint from maces, swords, bats, hammers, cats, lightsabers, claws, and marbles, hopefully. And here is the finished product. I think this might be my new favorite. I can't test him out just yet, however, because I wanna let the paint and glue dry a little more and I don't want him to get damaged before our Star Wars theme tournament that we are only two more warriors away from completing. I know you guys really want Luke Skywalker and I found an awesome Luke Skywalker head on eBay but I really doubt it's going to come in on time, so I might just have to go with what I can get and what I have at this point, and I'll come back to those iconic figures you guys are asking for later. Thank you all so much for watching to the end. I really appreciate it. Our channel just hit 20,000 subscribers, which is just unbelievable. Thank you to everyone for subscribing. Thank you for all the views, likes, comments, emails, and all the positivity and support. I couldn't do this without you guys, and when positive comments pop up on my phone, it's just fuel for the fire. There are times when I'm literally about to quit and a comment will pop up and it gives me everything I need to go on. It means so much to me. So thank you again. Thank you all so, so much. Don't miss next Saturday's video because it will be our May Warrior giveaway video. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new. If you need more Akedo action right now, click one of these links on your screen and we will see you in the next video.